Yo, what's up guys? So I have here a couple of boxes full of HomeKit smart home products. And I'm gonna take these down to beautiful Charleston, South Carolina today. This video is gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna go visit my grandpa and I'm gonna set him up with a smart home. So I'm about to head that way. There is a Best Buy uh, right before the interstate. So I'm gonna swing into Best Buy and pick up a couple of HomePod minis. Uh, he doesn't have anything like that. So we're gonna get some HomePod minis to act as our smart home hubs. Uh, I'm gonna show you everything that I've got here that I'm using. We're gonna set up some automations and stuff like that to help hopefully improve his life and give us some added security and safety benefits uh, with him being 85 years old and living alone. This is gonna be a bit of a challenge, uh, different than building a smart home for myself. We're gonna keep the setup simple, create some good automations, and I'm gonna show you everything along the way. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I love visiting my grandpa, so let's hit the road. So got my HomePod minis from Best Buy. I'll use those as my HomeKit hubs. Just looking forward to hanging out with Pappy as we call him. He's kind of everybody's favorite grandpa. He's just super cool. Uh, two time Silver Star recipient, combat veteran, Vietnam, plus a bunch of other awards. And uh, just a super cool guy. Haven't seen a person yet that didn't like Pappy. So got about a two hour drive ahead of me. Can't wait to get there, see him and get his smart home all set up. So I'll see you on the other side. All right, so I made it. Let me introduce you to Pappy and we will start talking about getting his smart home set up. Let's go. How you doing? Good, then. Good to see you. you ready to uh, yep. Let's build, do it. build a smart home? Let's do it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do it. All righty, so we are here and uh, I see you're using your Apple Watch still. How's that going for oh, you? Oh yeah, doing fine. Yeah? yeah, so you're an Apple guy, iPhone, iPhone Apple iPad. Watch, okay. iPad. All right, we got you some HomePod minis now. Part of this plan is really gonna just be trying to understand, I'll talk with him, and uh, try to understand how he kind of uses his house or moves through his house each day and create a smart home that works for him. So that's, uh, that's the plan. Sounds good. All right. All right, real quick, come with me. I got it. I can't believe I'm gonna show you this. This made me laugh when I saw this. Check out your boy right there. What? That was me right there. That was right before we got black belts. Y'all probably didn't even know. I got a black belt when I was like 12 or 13. <laughs> Pretty sure that's me right there. Look at that cute little guy. Got some of the cousins over there. That's some artwork my daughter did recently. There we go, look, there's my old man back in the day, my aunt, there's Pappy, and that's his wife of many, many years, Nana, we called her. Look at that stud right there. All right, so what I did was sit down with Pappy, hang out, talk to him. Um, I took a bunch of notes. We'll go through this and everything that I set up and wanted to set up, automations and stuff. But first, shout out, big thank you to Acara for sponsoring this video. If you don't know, Acara makes these products that work with HomeKit and other voice assistants as well. Of course, we're using HomeKit. Uh, they're all very affordable. Basically, they make a number of different hubs. 
Uh, the hubs can be cameras. The M1S is the one I'm using. I really like this one. But they sell these child accessories. You can get all kinds of sensors. They're very affordable. They pair to the hubs. And when I thought about coming down and doing this little project for my grandpa, a car was the first thing I thought of because I like them so much. They're extremely reliable. I've been using them for years, long before they sponsored this channel. And uh, they just work. And when you're talking about uh, setting up a smart home or any kind of technology like this for an 85 year old it needs to work well and reliably and I know with the Acara stuff I'll get that so that's why I went with the Acara um, I'm going to show you everything that I'm using today I'll put links to all the stuff down below they do often have sales for Black Friday and just different times of year so uh, be on the lookout for those again links below and thanks to Acara for sponsoring today's video now let's get into what I've done you might can see I actually have an Apple TV behind me. So that wasn't originally a part of the setup. So I got the two HomePod minis on the way here after sitting and talking with them. Thought of a better solution for his TV watching. He watches a lot of TV, you know, since he's sitting around the house a lot. And um, we thought an Apple TV could be a nice addition to his setup. The Siri remote sounded really good for him. So I went to Walmart and picked up an Apple TV 4K, got it connected. Again, two HomePod minis. I put one in the living room and that kind of covers, you know, the kitchen and whole living room area. Again, this is a pretty small place. Put the other HomePod mini in his bedroom. So now he has those, you know, he can do, he actually likes listening to music too. So he can listen to music throughout his whole house. I kind of walked him through how to use Siri to play music. You can move your music from one room to another, all kinds of cool stuff like that. So uh, hopefully he'll really enjoy that. Plus having the Siri controls to control your smart home, control your TV, you know, with the HomePods be able to call for help. You know, you can tell Siri on your HomePod. Hey, call 911. Should I call emergency services? Uh, or your phone, really any of your Siri devices, you know, to call 911 and it will call 911 and contact your emergency contacts and stuff like that. So having those safety features, just having HomePod minis in the house, I think is really good. Again, that's the foundation. Those will act as his HomeKit hub so I can set up automations and things like that for him thanks to those HomeKit hubs. Now I did test out his Wi-Fi. He's got really good speeds, uh, no issue with that. Everything was already pretty good here. So definitely make sure if you're setting up something like this for yourself or somebody else, make sure you have a good Wi-Fi if you need to get a good router or mesh system like that. Look into that. Now I can start adding my HomeKit products and build my automation. So I'm gonna kind of walk through everything, my notes that I took for him, what I set up, what I'm using and some of the automations that we're using, okay? And the first thing I did was add an Acara hub. So I went with the Acara M1S. This is just one of my personal favorites because it has a really loud speaker, uh, which we're gonna get into because the security aspect it was important to him. Uh, but it has a loud speaker, also has this little LED ring that we can use for a nightlight and also kind of status notifications and stuff like that. So that's why I like using this one. So I went ahead and set that up initially and we're gonna pair all of our Acara little sensors and child devices to this M1S. So I added this to HomeKit and anything that I pair to that hub will automatically show up in HomeKit. So super easy setup now. First thing I started with was security. Um, we're gonna go around and just put little door and window sensors on the main doors. You can put these on windows and stuff if you're concerned with that too. I just stuck with the main doors, front door, back door. Just set up a basic security system so he can arm this at night when he goes to bed. Have a little peace of mind if a door is ever open, it's gonna sound that alarm, wake him up, you know, so he can kind of do what he needs to to protect himself. Now he did have one room, actually his bedroom has a double door that he never accesses, okay? He never goes in there. So for this one, I thought to use a little vibration sensor on the door so that, you know, if somebody's ever tampering with that door, trying to open it up, glass shatters, anything like that, it's gonna vibrate that little sensor and that will also trigger the alarm. Now sticking with the security thing, the next thing I did was add a little um, Acara G2H Pro camera. So he didn't really want cameras all throughout his house. Uh, he does live in kind of a retirement community, so he didn't want them on the outsides and stuff like that everywhere. So we just set up one little camera to basically watch his front door. So this camera is pointing at his front door. Um, I have it set to record only when he's away so he can access the live stream and recordings anytime from anywhere thanks to HomeKit. This does support HomeKit secure video. Good peace of mind there, being able to kind of view your front door anytime you want. Also, you know, if you're laying in bed, you hear a sound or something, 
you want to pull up your camera feed, you can check the front door. Things like that are always really nice uh, reasons why I like having cameras. Now, the next thing I started adding was water sensors. So I added these to the M1S hub and put these all throughout his house. He actually has a really old water heater. Um, so I put one of these uh, under there. That way, if there's ever any issues, you know, it'll probably need to be changed eventually. This way, if there's ever a leak, hopefully he'll get notified before too much damage is caused. They have like kind of a little neighborhood maintenance guy that they use here at this place. So uh, a lot of this stuff, you know, is just to notify him in the event of something being wrong so he can call somebody to get the help he needs to come fix things or whatever. So these water sensors are great. They're very affordable. I put these anywhere that you're worried you might have a leak. These have saved my butt in the past. I'm telling you at my own house, so can't recommend that enough. So in talking with him, I found out he doesn't really use the ceiling fans um, or his lights. He just keeps the fans on kind of all the time, doesn't ever use the light switches. So that makes things really easy. He just uses uh, a couple lamps really uh, for lighting in like the living room and his bedroom. So I was able to use the Acara smart plugs just plug the lamps into these smart plugs. We didn't discuss motion sensors. I only added a couple motion sensors. So talking with him, I wanted to see how he lives his life. And first thing he does every morning is come out of his room. He said, you know, he turns his lamp on in the living room. He sits down, grabs his iPad, kind of goes through the news and stuff like that. So I said, let's create some automations around this. I set up one motion sensor that would detect him as he comes out of his room, set up an automation to only run, you know, at between certain hours in the morning. And when it detects motion, it automatically turns on his lamp. So it's already on before he even gets to it. So he can kind of see where he's going if it's dark, but also doesn't have to, you know, fiddle with it. And um, I'm just turning this on again, using one of those Acara smart plugs. So this worked great. He really loved this automation. And um, I think it's something he'll, you know, it's the simple things uh, sometimes. And I think he's really gonna like this one. Now I also added a motion sensor to his bedroom so we can do other automations like, you know, when motion is detected at night, turn on the M1S night light, you know, things like that. I always recommend, you know, manual controls for everybody, every smart home whenever possible. If you live in with family, if you're setting up something like this for an older person, you gotta have manual controls, whether you're changing the light switches or using these little Acara mini switches to control lamps and things like that. So I set up a bunch of these little Acara mini switches. I put one by his recliner that he always sits in. It can turn his lamp on and off. Uh, the same one that we automated with that motion. I put one by his bedside table that turns his bedroom lamp on and off. I put another one on the wall by his door so he can toggle that on and off when he walks by. So all the, these Acara mini switches are fantastic. They work in HomeKit, so you can automate these through the Acara app, but also in HomeKit to control any of your HomeKit accessories. You can set up single, double, and long press actions. I didn't want to confuse, I have a hard time remembering those myself, so I just set up single actions for each one of these so he could just toggle the lights on and off. Uh, and I highly recommend these little switches as well. The next one is a really fun one uh, that I thought was just, just a great idea. So he actually has, you know, pretty expensive motorized scooter. He keeps just outside of his, uh, out of, outside of his back door. I think always in the back of his mind, he's a little worried about somebody taking off with it. Nobody's ever messed with it, but um, it's just right outside of his back door. He always checks on it. He only uses this maybe once a day or maybe not even that much just to, you know, go certain places where he doesn't want to walk or is a little too far to walk. So what I did to give him a little peace of mind is I took one of these vibration sensors. There's a perfect spot right up under the seat and I stuck a vibration sensor right under there. I configured his phone to send him notifications if motion is ever triggered on that scooter. Of course, if it's him, he'll ignore it. But this way, you know, if anybody ever messes with his uh, electric scooter, it'll send him a notification. Thanks to that little vibration sensor. These things are awesome. Um, I did a video a while ago showing some really creative things you can do with some of these. Um, I'll put a link to that below or somewhere up here if you want to check that out. Then I also just added a little air quality sensor. Um, I, these come with a magnet, so I stuck it to his fridge just to show us, you know, the temperature air quality and stuff like that. Uh, don't really have any automations based around this, but these you can use to trigger, you know, if you're using clean air machines or purifiers, things like that, you can use, you know, 
the air quality in the room to trigger that or whatever. But these just have a cool little visual thing on there. So I just stuck this on the fridge so you can kind of see the temperature and the air quality in his room uh, or in his kitchen anytime he wants to. What's probably the most important thing that I set up for him and the reason I'm really glad I did this. Not only does he have the HomePod minis in each room uh, that he can use to call for help if he needs to, he does wear an Apple Watch, which gives us a lot of peace of mind that has fall detection. Okay, that's a good reason for any older person to have an Apple Watch is they can have that fall detection, which will notify uh, emergency services, but also emergency contacts if there's ever a fall or an emergency like that. So first of all, that's a really great thing to set up on its own. Next, you know, I created an automation that basically, if there's no motion in his house for a while, it's gonna text us, all right? It's gonna let us know. So what I did uh, to, to accomplish this is basically in the Acara app, you can set an automation when there's no motion um, for any specific amount of time, you know, you can do something. So the way I set this up was, if there's no motion for over 12 hours, to turn that little Acara M1S lamp to a very specific brightness level. I think it was 21% that I set up, okay? So we're never gonna really set this at 21% exactly. So that's why I did this. And then what I did is on his phone, I created a Siri shortcut, okay? And this runs on his phone. So this is a personal shortcut. So you can do things like text people with personal shortcuts. All right, so I created an automation on his phone at 8 a.m. every day. It's basically gonna check that little M1S hub light and it's gonna say, is that brightness between like 20 and 23% or whatever? You can kind of play with that if you need to, but make it real specific. Um, and if it is, then it's gonna text me or other family members, hey, there's been no motion in my house for a while. You might wanna give me a call and check up on me. This is what it's really all about, I feel like. And, you know, he says he gets up multiple times a night, usually by 6 a.m. and he's out, you know, watching, reading the news on his iPad already. So by 8 a.m., there should definitely have been some motion in the past 12 hours, okay? So uh, if there's not, it's gonna kind of set that series of things in effect. You know, his, he's good about charging his phone, so he also has iPad, so this automation will run and it will text me if there's been no motion. And I can give him a call and we can say, hey, just wanna check up on you, everything's okay. You can kind of fine tune this, you can create conditions with like, you know, maybe a vacation mode, so you can toggle a vacation mode if you're not away from the house. You can kind of take it from there and tailor it to your needs, but I felt like this automation, just such a good one. And this is just like another level of kind of security and peace of mind that we're able to set up thanks to Acara, the automations available there, HomeKit, and Siri shortcuts. This will actually be the first time, this is a good learning experience for me, this is the first time I'll have two HomeKit homes set up that I can access. So I've got full access to his HomeKit home since I shared uh, that with me and my account so he can call me anytime and I can pull up the home app and I can see, you know see if there's something unresponsive or I can change automations create automations I can do all that from my house I also have access to his Acara login and stuff so I can log in to the Acara app all the way from my house and change some things do some automations and stuff in there if I need to check on stuff so I'll be able to basically manage his smart home. Of course, there's some limitations of, you know, at a certain point you'll have to probably come to the house, set up new products and stuff like that. But for the most part, I can manage his automations. You can set up cameras for loved ones if that's something you guys wanna do just to, you know, be able to check in on people. I can actually even intercom to his HomePod minis all the way from my house since I have access to his home kit home if I want to say there's some kind of emergency or something he's not answering his phone maybe I can just pull up the phone and intercom hey Pappy what's going on what are you doing you're not answering your phone give me a call you know I don't think I'll have to do that but you can if you have that kind of situation so just some great ways to kind of you know add safety security peace of mind create those smart homes for your loved ones help him out, keep it simple if you're doing something like this for an 85 year old, but so far he's loving this. Um, he's gonna tinker with it a little bit. Hopefully he doesn't mess it up too bad, but if he does, I've got access. I can go in there and help him out. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, would you have done anything differently? Be 
Big thanks to Acara for sponsoring this video and providing all the Acara accessories uh, so that I can hook up my grandpa with this smart home. Again, check out the links below for everything that I've used today. If you wanna see some really cool automation ideas, check out this past video that I did with all the Acara accessories and sensors and stuff. I'll put that right up here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.